All right, just going to do a quick video showing a couple scriptures showing how interpretation in scripture comes from God. Okay, it doesn't come from the Roman Catholic Church, doesn't come from, you know, occultic Roman Catholic priests who you have to rely on whatever he says, and you can't search the scriptures and study it on your own. You have to put your blind faith in the Roman Catholic priests. Now, I'm going to show you that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what the Bible says and will reveal to you truth. And that interpretation of scripture comes from God, not from some papist priesthood or, you know, antichrist pope or whatever. Interpretation comes from God, not the heathen Roman Catholic Church. So I'm going to show you some verses on that. First of all, turn to Genesis chapter 40 and verse number 8. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Interpretations come from God. They belong to God, not some pagan papist priesthood. Uh, next turn to Jan Daniel chapter 2, verse 26 to 30. The king answered and said, said to Daniel, whose name was Bel Belshazzar, hope I'm saying the name right, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Uh, but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and maketh known to the king of the, to the king Nebuchadnezzar, which shall be in the latter days, thy dream and thy visions of thy head, or and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As as for thee, O king, thy thoughts came un into thy mind upon thy bed, which should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than anything, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Exactly. You know, God is the one who reveals the interpretations. Daniel didn't say, well, let me just consult with my archbishop or my, my uh, local bishop and just see what he says and just blindly follow what he says. He doesn't say that. He goes directly to God. He says there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Turn to Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 47. All right, sorry, I just had a bit of uh, technical difficulties there. Something went wrong with the camera. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, so anyway, I was in Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 47. That was, I was going to have you turn there. So basically, it says... And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behoved, behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Notice uh, verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He didn't tell them, well, go to your local uh, Catholic priest and, you know, show him what I said to you and he'll tell you. No, Jesus Christ opened their understanding. He showed them what the scripture said about him. More proof on that. Uh, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 14. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of, heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things for, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
uh, which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but by the Holy Ghost, what, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, uh, that for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know him, because they are spiritually discerned. Notice verse 13, though. Uh, which things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth. In other words, not blindly following your Catholic priest, but the Holy Spirit re revealing things to you, the Spirit of God revealing things to you. Very, very telling. The Holy Ghost, God will reveal things to you through His Holy Spirit, through His Holy Ghost. And by the way, by the way, uh, the whole Catholic Trinity is not scriptural at all. The Roman Catholic Trinity is just a repackaging of the Greco-Roman, uh, Hindu, uh, Arabian, Egyptian triple gods, uh, they called them. But the Holy Spirit of God, basically the Godhead is basically God is one person made up of the of body, soul, and spirit, which is Jesus Christ is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. I'm not going to get too much into that. I've covered it in other videos. But the Holy Spirit of God will reveal things to you. Not as as man's wisdom teaches, because again, God is above human intelligence. You can read about that in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways and thoughts are higher than your ways and thoughts. But he'll reveal things to you, not as man's wisdom teacheth. Okay, now very well-known verse. Turn to John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Who shows you things to come? Who reveals things to you? The Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth. Not the Catholic priesthood or going to your local archbishop. Or, you know, maybe getting some time with the Holy holy Pope or whatever to get things, you know, the Pope is, who's stealing titles of God. You know, give himself the title of reverend, which is a title of, of God in Psalms 111 verse 9, and calling himself Holy Father, which is a title of God the Father in John 17 verse 11, and forbidden to call yourself that as a religious title in Matthew 23 verse 9. But, of course, the Pope is a blasphemer, so what do you expect? But you go to the Holy Spirit. He'll, he'll show you things to come. He will show you all things. He'll, sh he'll teach you all things. Turn to John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So kind of reiterating what it said in John chapter 16, verse 13, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Next, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, way back in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may know the words, or that we may do all the words of his law. So I was looking at one of the verses above, but we may do all the words of the law. God reveals things to him. He doesn't say, oh, oh again, he, 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 like, notice how you're never seeing, notice how you're never seeing them say, well, go to the priest or, or go to this, go to the Catholic, you know, archbishop and see what he says. It's God who reveals things, reveals things to you. God is the one who interprets scripture for you. Uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He's the one who gives you that knowledge and revelation. Not to some exclusive, you know, papal office in the Catholic Church. He'll give you he'll give you, if you're saved, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yeah, he reveals things too. His the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. Turn to first John chapter two, verse twenty. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. What? Who is the Holy One? Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, who they are, you know, one person. Okay, the Godhead, again, uh, one body, 
Okay, one person made up of body, soul, and spirit. I'll put it that way. One person made up of body, soul, and spirit. Okay, when I say that Jesus Christ is the Holy Ghost, I'm saying that they all are one person. Okay, Jesus Christ is the body, the Holy Ghost is in him as the spirit, and the Father is in him as the soul. Now, they can separate, they can, there is distinction there, okay, it is not oneness, it is not modalism, because modalism and oneness, they, they didn't deny that there is any distinction in the Godhead, there is, okay, there is distinction in the Godhead. You can see that in, uh, for example, Matthew chapter 3, verse uh, 16 and 17, where there's the baptism of Jesus, where the body, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is on earth, the Father is in heaven, and the Holy Holy Ghost comes down like a dove. So you do, you do see separation there. But they're one person. There's four times the word person is used in reference to God. Uh, Job 13, verse 7 to 8. Uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. And Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And all four references are persons singular, not persons plural. It's one person in the Godhead. One person made of a body, soul, and spirit three and one, like first John five seven says, or sorry, these three are one. Proper the proper terminology would be these three are one. Like in first John five seven. But again, not gonna get too much into that because it is a bit off topic, but just wanted to explain that. You know, the Holy One is the Holy Ghost, and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and the Father are one person. Uh first John chapter two verse twenty seven. Do apologize, had some more uh, technical difficulties with the camera. But anyway, I was about to read 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, where it's the final scripture I was going to have you guys turn to, showing that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, reveals things too. God is the interpreter of the scriptures. He will show you what the scriptures say. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but that as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even at it, as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, he'll show you all things, he'll teach you all things, the Spirit of truth. Who's the one who interprets scripture? It's God, not the Catholic Church, not the Antichrist Pope, who is stealing, who is stealing the titles of God, the wicked blasphemer that he is, but the, God, but the Spirit of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father, the Godhead, he will uh, reveal all things to you. He'll show you things coming. He'll give you the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him, like Ephesians 1.17 says. So I just want to show you guys that. Uh, scripture teaches that God is the one who interprets scripture. God is the one who teaches you scripture, not some kind of blind authority in the Roman Catholic priest. Now, obviously, you can learn from teachers. There's nothing wrong with that. You, read, you know, for, uh, for example, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, you know, talks about learning from other brethren. But you don't put blind authority or blind faith in whatever they say, because they're still fallible. You know, God is the one who interprets scripture. And he can show you things that your teacher may be wrong on. That is a basic fact. So don't be deceived by the Roman Catholic Church. It is a satanic cult. And don't be deceived by their lies that, oh, you can't read the Bible on your own. You need the, the church, the priest, the Antichrist priest, to interpret scripture for you. No, you can read scripture for yourself. Now, you can learn from other brethren. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, you should learn from older brethren if you're newly saved. I mean, I still learn from older older brethren. I still have elders I submit to. I'm still I'm still a pretty young guy. Um, but the bottom line is, is that the Holy Ghost, he will show you truth. You don't have to have blind authority in some man of God, some teacher. Because they, they're still fallible men, too. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.